Off to Battleground BC first and some ugly news from Statistics Canada today about how that province is doing when it comes to job creation. The unemployment rate in BC did drop in December to 6.5%, and that is lower than the national average. And it's 0.3 percentage points lower than it was in November. That's the end of the good news. It did not drop because there were a whole lot of new jobs. It dropped because nearly 6,000 people gave up looking for work and dropped out of the labor force. In fact, StatsCan says that just a measly 600 new jobs were created in December in BC. By comparison, 40,000 jobs were created across the country. Why are these numbers a headache for Premier Clark? Well, take a look at this. Because just a few months ago, at the end of October, Clark told her party's annual convention that, quote, I'm going to run in the next election on the strong economy. I'm going to run on being number one in job creation. Clark, in fact, unveiled what she called her BC jobs plan back in September 2011 making similar claims then that her B.C. jobs plan would lead the country in job creation. Well, since her jobs plan went into effect, the record looks, well, awful. From September 2011 until last month, B.C. has seen the creation of 14,500 net new jobs. That ranks B.C. just sixth among all provinces. And if you measure B.C.'s job creation record on relative terms, it's even worse. The total number of full-time and part-time jobs in B.C. has grown just 0.6% since September 2011. That is eighth in the country. Only Nova Scotia and New Brunswick did worse. Now, B.C.'s putting B.C.'s sputtering jobs plan, well, this is your big story. Now, for more on this, we are joined by NDP MLA for Surrey Whaley and the NDP finance critic in Victoria. Uh, and he's in our Vancouver studio. Bruce, uh, uh, Bruce Ralston is, is, is standing by. And Bruce, um, great to have you here. The reason, of course, that every month these job numbers are going to be big news for, the, uh, for politicians in British Columbia is, as we noted at the top of the show, the fact that the premier herself has set the barrier kind of high. She wants B.C. to be number one in job curation, and if we measure BC going all the way back there to uh, when she announced that plan in September 2011, BC is six overall in total jobs created and way down in eighth spot if you measure job creation as a percentage of jobs created. In other words, not number one. Is that a problem for the Premier? Well, uh, it's uh, clearly a credibility problem, and there, it, it, this is more than just talking about it in interviews. The, the uh, BC Liberals have $15 million plan television advertising uh, where they talk about uh, the so-called jobs plan and its successes. So when uh, reality smacks you in the face and uh, gives you those kind of outcomes way down near the bottom instead of uh, the, uh, the touted uh, number one, I think that's a real problem for the credibility of the government and, and uh, this close to an election, uh, not, uh, not the best uh, strategy. We had uh, Colin Hansen on the program last night, and of course he knows all about job numbers, a former B.C. finance minister under uh, Premier Campbell. And he did make the point that these, these job numbers reports will go up and down from month to month. That said, this month, last month, it's been three or four months now that it has been a very tepid uh, sort of job story in B.C. And one of the things I assume that would worry anyone uh, would be the fact that the participation rate is dropping. In other words, a whole lot of British Columbians are saying it's so tough to find work, they're just bailing out of the workforce altogether. Well, yeah, the, the participation rate is uh, there was 6,000 people who uh, were unemployed who left the labor force because they're what uh, they call discouraged workers. They've given up on the idea of finding a job in the, in the near future. But, um, but Mr. Hansen is right in a sense the numbers do go up and down, but generally uh, over the time that the, since the jobs plan was announced, September 19th, uh, 2011, not in August uh, 2011, but September 19th, 2011, uh, the, the results have been very, very lukewarm. Uh, and uh, in particularly in recent months, I mean, the, the, this, the announcement this morning from StatsCan, 40,000 uh, jobs created and only 600 in British Columbia. Now, those 600 are important to the people who get those jobs, but the uh, StatsCan uh, analyst said that that's statistically insignificant. So um, when you've staked uh, what political credibility you have on this so-called jobs plan and uh, 
it's not producing any results and you're really being forced to make uh, misleading and false public statements about it and pay for that with public advertising, this is, uh, these are not, uh, these are not winning, uh, a winning combination to convince people that uh, you, uh, you deserve to stay where you are. The, uh, especially when you compare BC's uh, job growth record compared to its Western partners, to Alberta, to Saskatchewan, where there's tremendous uh, and strong job growth. What's the difference? What's the answer if, if your party forms government later this spring? Can you find an answer to boost BC's jobs growth? Well, well, it's certainly true that uh, a, a provincial economy and a, and a provincial government has uh, some tools, not the same tools that a federal government has in terms of uh, dealing with uh, the economic levers of, of the economy. But um, there are a couple of things that a provincial government can do. One is in the area of education and training. Uh, skills training is a huge issue in British Columbia. It's been identified by uh, leader Adrian Dix and I when we meet with uh, business leaders throughout the province. Uh, one of the top things on their agenda is the issue of skills training. There's a a shortage uh, for the big projects, the big resource projects that are coming on of, of skilled labor. Uh, the BC Construction Association held a job fair in Dublin, Ireland uh, not too long ago. Um, other employers are resorting to looking uh, offshore as well. Um, so uh, the, the, the government's been in power 11 years. Uh, these problems are, uh, were identified and recognized uh, some time ago, yet on that long-term incremental building of the labor force and the skills of the people of British Columbia, the government hasn't uh, put much effort into that and, and really would rather, it seems, uh, spend money on television ads talking about what they claim they've done rather than what they've actually done. Bruce Ralston, the BC NDP finance critic, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks very much.